Hey guys, Sneak here. Hope you're doing great through these winter holidays. And I've decided to film something quick and nice for you, which is the tips for the Riffle Force. Now, Riffle Force is a pretty common technique, and it's used by all the magicians from beginner to advanced and professional card handling level. And through the times I've been doing magic, I realized the most common technique some, has some problems in it. So, this is my attempt to uh, kind of fix it and make it more easier for you guys. So, here it is. I have a prediction card here, which will hopefully match the, match the card you will select. And we'll keep it for here for now. Now, uh, here's a normal shuffle deck, of course, but let's shuffle it a bit more, just in case. And we do it in a cut, just to make sure everything is squared and randomized in this order. So, the next thing you are going to do is just say stop while I'm refilling down with my thumb. So, go ahead, stop here. Great choice, actually. This card should be an ace of spades. I said should be because my prediction is nothing more than ace of spades too, which is a perfect match. And that's a new rifle force. Alright guys, now it's time to learn the actual technique. And now sometimes I call this for the rocking horse, uh, just because it's fun, but it has nothing to do with the original names. So this force is based on our two techniques. Uh, first one is the John C. Holtz Rocking Chair Force, which was published in 1978 in one of the Apocalypses magazine from Harry Lorraine, I believe it's for the volume 1. And second thing uh, was written down by Richard Kaufman in his great book Card Magic. Um, and second thing is a little idea of using the Riffle Force from Injok. So, combining these two forces together, um, I came up with a thrill ways of doing the force in the most unsuspicious way. So it looks like this. The card can be either forced from the top of the deck or the bottom as you wish. But I like to use the top one, because it's kind of most common way to say stop and hug them to take this card instead of doing the force on this one. Well, here is the basic mechanics. You have the card you want to force on top, and I will keep it face up for explanation purposes. And the next thing you are going to do is you can shuffle the cards, keeping the top stock. Again, it's uh, not like the most necessary thing, you can just place the card you want to force on top. But the next important thing is a cut, because I'm actually cutting the deck and doing in joke here. It's kind of automatic in joke, and I will show you how it's done in a moment. The important point now is to cut about sort of the deck. Uh, not the less, because that would be suspicious there, uh, but about sort of the deck, 18 cards or so would be perfect. So you swing cards it to your left hand and the next thing you're going to do is toss the right packet. So if you toss this at this point, it will naturally create tension between the cards and create in joke with those cards. Uh, at first you may try to do it like this and you will have a pretty large jokes on several cards. But that's not a problem because it could be easily fixed using your thumb here. So you're pushing all the cards back inside the deck, except for the one, which is right above the card to be forced. So one more time, uh, you just casually cut about sort of the deck and throw this one on top. Now you're gonna square all the cards except for the one or two, if you have the double, it doesn't matter. And the size of the jock you want to have is this much. It's just a little one and this size is prevent you from flashing. So if you put the pinky here, it will keep you from all the angles around you. From this side, this side, and of course the edge of the deck will keep you from flashing it from the top. So now it's time to do the actual force procedure. And it's pretty basic and easy thing, because all you have to do is find this spot where any card is. And if you miss it, I mean, if they stop you earlier or like later from this spot, it's not a problem. I will teach you the ways to fix it. Now let's start 
trying to refill up to this card. So the most important point is a grip. Looks like this, the modified dealer's grip with a pinky right on the extreme corner. So you won't have a break. Don't worry about that. And your thumb, actually the tip of your thumb should be placed on an extreme left outer corner, just like that. So you can refill up and feel the point to stop. Now it happens because of in joke, of course. You will naturally feel how it stops there, like a short card. So you will ask them to refill up, uh, to say stop while you're refilling down. And here are the three situations that could be happened there. First situation is they could stop you before the jog. Let's say they stop you here. And here you will perform the a rocking chair force. But you are perfect position to just grab the cards from in -jog. So you're grabbing the in -jog from behind with your right thumb. And in this motion of kind of revolving the deck to the front, you will just pick up from the jog and cut all the cards above the first one. And I like to, if this situation happens, I like to mention something. Okay, that's about the middle, right? So, any words will prevent you from kind of giving a hit on the force and will fly on. So, one more time, they stop you before the card you want to force. You pick up with your right thumb from the jog, keeping the gap here. Then covering with the fingers, you're doing like a rocking chair here and pick up every, everything above the force card. Just hang the left hand to them, ask them to pick this card and remember it. Now, it was situation number one. Second situation is the most perfect one, because uh, it naturally happens when you have a ni rice, nice timing, sorry. So when you have a nice timing on the force, they could stop you exactly on selected card. So, just like that. So you will you'll ask them, just say stop and I'm refilling down with my thumb. Stop here. So it usually happens on the count of two. One, two, stop. And in this case, all you have to do is like again pick up from the jog. But it's not, that's not the most necessary thing, because you're just picking up from this break and lifting it up, hanging in the couch. So that's uh, probably the most easiest way to do it, if you can. Uh, but the last way is also not that hard, because you have the jock here. Wait, it's too small there. So what happens if they stop you uh, passing through the first card? Let's say here. So you will do actually the same thing, the only difference is you will release the thumb while doing this rocking motion. So you pick up the jog as before with your right thumb, bring it forward, and while you passing this point of the deck covering uh, the bottom packet, you'll just release everything from your thumb. And maybe move it to here, just to be like consistent motion of doing nothing and switching nothing. And then you will ask them to just pick up the thing. So, let's recap all the three uh, situations here. The deck is shuffled. You will just make a cut. Just minimize the jog here. And if they stop you before the cut, you will pick up everything at the jog. If they stop you right on the cut, that's a perfect situation. And if they stop you just beneath the cut, somewhere here, you will actually pick up the jog and release this from this point, having a nice force from here. Now, another thing is the bottom force. If you want to force the bottom card, which is also pretty easy thing. Oops. Uh, all you have to do for this is do the same thing, but showing the upper card. So what I mean by that is, if they stop you here, you just leave from the jog and show him them this card, and. Now the two situations are nearly identical. This one is perfect, and the last one is uh, probably most trickier one. But you show them the card again. So that's basically it. Uh, if you have some questions, feel free to comment or write me in my email. I will answer with everything I could, and I do hope you enjoy this thing. So have a nice weekend.